Agassiz. Uh, welcome to our daily devotional. Interestingly enough, I'm doing, um, I'm continuing a devotional on atmospheric warfare, and um, I got some of my own atmospheric warfare, which completely, um, <laughs> which completely uh, took my broadcast off. And so this is, I'm going to start all over again um, because. I just have to, um, but this is a prime example of what just happened is a prime example of atmospheric warfare. I've never had that happen to me before when I've been broadcasting, but now I'm broadcasting about something that has to do with the atmosphere, and I suppose uh, there's a little bit of a, of a, a resistance. So let me go back and explain how this happens. So we looked at Ephesians, and I'm going to go back quickly, because if you've been watching, now you're going to hear all over again what I've already said. But um, so we started in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and I just want to really quickly talk about the 12th verse of Ephesians 6. And it says, our fight, our struggle is not against people of the earth, flesh and blood, but against the rulers and authorities and the powers or cosmic powers and rulers of the world's darkness. Okay. Against spiritual powers of the evil, uh, of evil in the heavenly world or realm. Okay. So we get, listen, we're not waging war against natural things. These are things in the atmosphere or in the heavenly realms that are opposing us. Okay. So we, we talked about that and now we're going to look at Daniel, the 10th chapter. And what's happening here in Daniel, the 10th chapter is that Daniel has said a prayer and, and the angel has finally come to Daniel to answer or respond to this prayer. And here goes the response. It says, then the man said to me, Daniel, do not be afraid. Some time ago from the first day you decided and gave your heart to this to this matter to get an understanding and to humble yourself before your God since that time God has listened to you and to your words or your prayers have been heard and I have come because of your prayers but the word the prince of the kingdom of Persia okay which is a spiritual being and then it gives an explanation because I'm in the expanded Bible it says nations have their pressing angels according to Deuteronomy 32 8 and 9 that are that it fight if sorry, if fought me and withstood against me for 21 days. And then Michael, one of the most important angels or princes came to help me because I um, have have come to explain to you the understanding of what will happen to your people because of the vision that you saw. Okay, so what's happening here is Daniel prays. Somehow the angel that's sent to respond to him, because it says that from the beginning God was listening, that angel that was sent to respond to Daniel came, um, was trying to come and it was caught up in an atmospheric hold. And so it fought with this angel, these demons fought this angel for 21 days until Michael, the archangel, archangel came down and fought for on that angel's behalf, giving him ability to leave that realm. Okay. So we're talking about again, atmospheric warfare. So Daniel prays waiting for his answer. It gets caught up. Okay, because the, the angel is in warfare in the atmospheric area. And Deuteronomy 32 talks about how these angels are given different dominions. Now, remember that a demon is a fallen angel. And so when we look at this demonic influence, we realize that when they're using the same title, they're, per, they're princes and kings, but that's because they were angels that are now fallen and turned into demonic forces. Okay, so this angel is held up. Okay. And in the atmosphere. And so we look at Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and we put it together with Daniel, the 10th chapter, we recognize what's happening. This is spiritual warfare that's going on. Okay. And now what I was saying, um, in the last broadcast, exactly when I got cut off was about these, um, about when you go into a place or you feel a heaviness, you feel a sense of oppression or a heaviness or a darkness or something that's holding in a place. Like if you're in a church or uh, sometimes you can be in a house. Sometimes you could be just in a neighborhood or in an area. It could be even your own house, but you feel like a heaviness or a weight come upon you. This is an atmospheric type of oppression where you can't really identify where it's coming from or what it's connected to, but there's a heaviness that comes and that heaviness feels like an oppressive, like, force. Okay. Even, um, even in classrooms, I've experienced it before. And so when these things happen, these are atmospheric shifts. Okay. And so in Isaiah, the scripture says that we should put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Okay. And so what he's describing there is, um, 
It is a place of lifting, lifting the heaviness with praise, okay? So when we talk about warfare, it's important to understand that we want to engage the atmosphere first because it's in the atmosphere that spiritual beings are, are residing. They're held, holding up in the atmosphere. Not something you can visibly see, but something that's atmospheric. And so when this atmosphere change or shift goes to a ne in a negative direction, it's important to engage the atmosphere. We have authority over the atmosphere and because Christ has given us that, that authority, we should exercise the atmosphere first. We should engage the atmosphere first. How do we do that? Well, Isaiah, it, it talks about in Isaiah and it's very straightforward that we put on a garment of praise. So we start to praise God. We start to lift up the name of Jesus. Why? Because the scripture says that when we draw near to him, he draws nearer unto us. Praise draws us near to God and draws him nearer unto us. So it shifts the atmosphere. It brings about an atmosphere change of worship and praise that brings forth the heavenly, opens up the heavenlies and brings access from up for us to God in that relationship. And so we start to praise and we engage the atmosphere. And as we start to praise and, and engage the atmosphere, we start to feel a shift almost, almost for me, almost instantly. As I start praising God, I can feel a shift in the atmosphere. Now here goes the tricky part. Sometimes you're in a place in which you're praising or worshiping becomes a, a weird type of thing um, because you're in a public location or in a place where that, that doesn't really work. And so I begin to praise in my spirit. I begin to allow my spirit to praise God, my soul to praise God. And I may not actually open my mouth to say a word of praise. I might, I might say something low if I, if I'm able to, or I might just start to worship the name of, of, of God. And in my mind, I'm going into battle and in my soul, I'm going into battle and in my spirit is going into battle. But my body looks like I'm just sitting there, just sitting in a situation. And so I begin to praise. That's the first way that I start to engage the atmosphere. And this is according to the Isaiah passage. And then after I've done um, praising and worshiping in the atmosphere, then I begin to, to say, well, um, I, I begin to talk about the goodness of God and his victories and his, and his, um, triumphs and how he has overcome the works of the enemy. And I use scripture to do that. And so what it might sound like or feel like, and I, and I, uh, I remember actually, I'll tell you a story. Uh, when I was engaging in a lot of spiritual warfare, I wanted my daughter to be able to um, engage in warfare if she needed to, because you never know if, you know, your children are experiencing warfare and they may not know. And so I talked to her about how the atmosphere in a place can feel different or tense or seem like it's kind of against you or feel, it feels feels somehow not right in a way. And we can kind of feel that as humans, we can feel it. And so when that's happening, then that basically the warfare has come to you. It's set in your atmosphere. And so I told her, when you, if you feel that kind of thing, I want you to start to praise God. I want you to think of one of the worship songs or think of one of your Psalms or a scripture that glorifies God and start to lift up the name of God. Even if you don't open your mouth, start to sing that song to yourself or hum that song to yourself and begin to worship the name of the Lord in the atmosphere. And as you start to do that then start to profess the promises of God the truths of God and so it might like I said uh, it may seem a, a little bit um, off because you're like, but yeah, but this is heavy. Yeah. For the heavy, we need the praise, right? So we start to engage in this garment of praise and put on this garment of praise. And so we start to say, God, you're good. You are holy. You are righteous. You are Adonai. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the, you are the beginning and the end. You are uh, sovereign in this place. It says that Christ has overcome every foe. And so we start to praise God for, for who he is. We magnify him and worship him and give him glory. I thank you, God, for turning it around. I thank you that you're victorious in all ways. I thank you that um, that you have written the beginning and you have written the end. You are both Genesis and Revelation. You you are you are all that man needs. You are the sufficiency, and so we start to do that, and it changes the atmosphere. Why? Because whatever this heavy thing is does not want God to be worshipped. It wants to create chaos or confusion or frustration, and so you start to bring flood the atmosphere with praises to God. And when the atmosphere is engaged in praise, then you start to shift it towards the truths of God, right? And so then you start to say things like, um, well, so I'm, I'm praising God. And then I start to shift to say, God, and I'm, and I'm grateful that you reign in above all atmospheric, um, 
you know, troubles or issues. You've told us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. I thank you, Lord God, that you're pulling down these strongholds. I thank you, Lord God, that you've given us authority to war in the atmosphere. And then I start to say, and, and the enemy is under your feet and all principalities and all powers are lower than you. And I'm engaging the atmosphere. Now I'm starting to actively say things that have to do with warfare, things that have to do with God being victorious, things that have to do with him being our strong tower, him being our our front and rear guard, him being our banner over us. And so we start to use, we start to use scripture in order to set up a precedence of, I am advancing in this atmosphere. Now I have praise. I've engaged the atmosphere. The atmosphere belongs to the Lord. This is his kingdom. He is our king. We are reigning under him. I am advancing behind him. And now I'm saying he's the banner over me. And now I'm saying he marches us forward into victory. And now I'm saying he's my front and rear guard. I'm not intimidated by whatever's going on. And now I'm saying that God has given me favor and he's opened doors and he's made a way and he has decided the path that has been set before me and he's fit, set my feet on that path and I will advance on the path that God has set for me. In other words, listen, wherever I am finding myself if the atmosphere is changing, according to the scriptures, God has set my feet in that place and I have authority and dominion in that place. And so I shall declare that authority under the authority of Christ. And so you're going into war. You've engaged the atmosphere and now you're marching forth with scriptures, with truths, with praises, and you're just going to keep pressing until things change. That is spiritual warfare. And it can take, sometimes it takes time, but at the end of the day, you get victory and you'll notice a shift in the atmosphere. You'll notice a shift in things. Now, there are some times in which some uh, spiritual or demonic presence has a right in someone's house or has a right in some location because they've engaged in things that they should not engage in. At that point, you want to ba basically get an understanding from the Holy Spirit. If you have uh, authority to continue to war there or somebody else has opened up a door that they need to close on their own. So if it's not your house, right? If it's not your land and it doesn't belong to you and you're in someone else's place and they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing, but it's engaging spiritual kind of activity, then you want to be very mindful to be wise. But praising God is never going to be a problem. You worship and praise the most high God and engage in that type of warfare. And then the Holy Spirit will give you a moment of clarity or understanding. You know, with this place, these people have been doing something they shouldn't be doing here. These people have been, you know, there's been something going on that shouldn't be going on. And so so now I need to have the, I need to have direct and per, expressive permission to continue in a place that I don't have actual authority, right? I don't have actual authority, meaning like I'm going to somebody else's house and now I decided I'm going to go to war in their house. Well, this is their house that they own. Okay. So if they own this place, uh, physically, they actually own this property then your ability to go into war without their permission or without their their they need to be worn with you without their um authority that becomes an issue because now you've taken away from them natural authority in order to try to exercise spiritual authority so you want to be mindful of that but otherwise if you're in public places that don't have any nobody owns it it's not in it's something like that or if it's in your own home by all means engage the atmosphere first praise god and then start to declare things that are true about what god has done and then pull yourself into a place of war Warfare. And we're going to continue this conversation tomorrow. So I'm praying for you. I hope that you're praying for uh, launching legacies. We we indeed need your prayer. Uh, if you've been or if you were around to see that um, that atmospheric assault on my periscope, then great because that's a good example of understanding that we're, we're in warfare all the time. Like that's never happened before until I start talking about atmospheric war. So and, and it's perfectly fine. It almost makes me laugh because I'm like, look, God, you still have the victory. Whatever you want me to say, I'm going to say it no matter what. Why? Because you are the king of kings and you're the Lord of lords. You reign over all, all things, right? And so we have to continue to give everything we can to the Lord in order for us to remember to maintain that he's given us authority, but also he's given us victory. Go forth in victory, um, be blessed, and we'll see you again tomorrow with another of our broadcasts continuing on spiritual warfare. Until then, goodbye.